Hi guys, in this tutorial I'm going to explain you how you can use the command array. So, if we go with the mouse and click in this arrow, we have here three options. And now we are going to select this one that says rectangular array. With this, we can copy the objects that we select and dispose them in a grid, like this example here. So, I'm going to click in the icon, then I select the objects of this window, press enter, and now you can see this ribbon here that just appeared. Here we can control the number of items and the spacement between them. In this blank, we insert a horizontal spacement between the items. At this moment is 2700, which is the distance between the first and second items. I'm going to change it to 5000. I press enter or click in another blank and you can see the difference now. Then I'm going to insert a vertical spacement which for my case is 2600. As you see, now I have these windows disposed between the three floors and these four houses, which are exactly the number of columns and the rows that you can see there. So, let's select the array again. If you notice, we only need to click in one object and you can see the blue icons appearing here. I'm going to explain you how they work. If I click in the first one, which is represented by a square, I can move our array to a different position. For example, I will move them vertically 1000 meters. If I click in the triangles located in the second column and the second row, I can change its spacement. For example, I will click here to change the vertical spacement. If I would click in that one, I would do the same but for the horizontal distance. The triangles located in the last column and in the last row, what they do is to change the number of items. If I click here and I drag to the right, I can see that I'm increasing the number of columns. So, as you see, it was quite easy to use. In this part, I will show you the polar array. If I click in the arrow next to the command, I can select here polar array. Now I'm going to choose these two lines, press enter, and for the center point of the array, I select the center of the circle. And as you see, the lines were disposed in a polar way and around this circle. Then, if you look in the ribbon, you can see it's a bit different than the rectangular array. And in the first column, you can see on the top the number of items of the array, which at this moment is 6. I will click here and change the number of items to 24. But Suppose if I change the spacement for, for example, 10, the number of items remained the same, but obviously it didn't fill all the circle in order to respect the spacement between them. And this number of 230 is exactly this angle over here. Now, let's look to this part of the ribbon. Here, where it says rows, it is set as 1, because I only have items displayed around the circle line. 
If I change it to 5, I will have 5 rows of items displayed over each other. And the distance between them, I can change it here. For example, currently this distance is 266. By the way, this total here would be the distance from the first item to the last one. The last column, it's for the axis Z, so in 3D. I click and hold the mouse wheel and move the pointer around. I change it the view. And now, even I have here three levels, the distance between each level is very small. That means I should change this distance to view anything. If I put 300, for example, you will see the difference. The last array type that I'm going to talk is path array. Imagine that we have a curve here and we want to place a certain object all along that curve. So this time we are going to click in path array, this icon. I'm going to select the object that I want to display all along the curve, press enter, and then I select the curve. As you see, I have now circles all along, but if I want them with a certain distance, I need to make some editings. So I will select the array path, and then I click in this triangle to change the distance of the objects. I will click, for example, here. I can also insert a specific distance here. But remember that this number is the distance along the path. For example, from here until there. And not the shortest distance between two items. Okay, so that was everything in this tutorial, thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to Cut in Black to watch the other tutorials of AutoCAD. Also if you, if you need extra help, I can provide to you online private lessons through Google Hangouts, just send me an email and I will give you all the details. Thank you and see you next time.